My talk is called Learn Code, Make Art. Um, there's a subtitle that was, you know, using the right brain to learn how to do code. Um, and then I sort of showed my presentation to Bob Holt, who's talking later, I don't know if he's in here, and I changed the subtitle for him, and I forgot to change it back. Um, so in itself, this slide is a piece of art. Um, so, let's see. So very brief intro. Again, my name is Jen Schiffer. Everywhere online, I'm Jen Schiffer. Um, two N's. I'm on Twitter a lot. Um, if I'm not Jen Schiffer on it, then my username is either just Jen or Baby Girl Money. So you can just keep trying if you're trying to look for my MySpace or whatever. Um, all my stuff is on jenschiffer.com. And I also have a blog um, where I write about technology on pancaketheorem.com. Um, a kind of a known fact with my friends is I'm a huge math nerd. Um, I have a computer science and math background, so if you want a conversation piece later and come up and talk to me, you can ask me what the pancake theorem is. So I've been doing web development for a really long time. I have a Java and PHP background, um, so I was doing more back-end stuff until fairly recently. And I've worked in a lot of different types of industries, uh, hyper-local news, healthcare cost transparency. I was a department administrator at Montclair State University for a couple of years up until I left and joined the NBA, a senior front-end web developer. And National Basketball Association is a really awesome place to work. Very forward-thinking. I've told tons of people already today. Um, we work with jQuery a lot and we have a whole bunch of different stacks for different projects um, but the best part is getting to work on the jQuery for stats.mba.com um, and right now the finals are going on but don't come up and ask me who my favorite team in the playoffs is because my answer is going to be the Blackhawks because I'm following hockey um, <laughs> I'm sorry Boston um, <laughs> Another thing that I really like to do is make art. And when I was growing up, and when most of us were growing up, we were all making art. We were coloring. We were drawing. We were working with clay, even with building blocks. Art is sort of a universal thing that we pick up from the time that we are able to do anything, move and walk around. Um, but it keeps me very busy working for all these different types of industries, and it kind of is hard for me to stay grounded. And I'm very, very easily overwhelmed. I'm constantly in a state of overwhelmingness. Because um, as a developer, you want to make sure that you have the latest tools, know what the hottest languages are, and whether they're going to be useful. Um, you need to make sure that you're able to pay your bills. So you have to work on some you know, crappy stuff sometimes or to make the money leaving you less time to work on the cool stuff that gets you motivated about learning new things. Um, having a life is also pretty good. I've heard good things about it. Um, and also not being bored all the time. I'm also in a constant state of boredom, um, especially my flight here. I, I come from New Jersey. I grew up in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and now I live in Montclair. And the office of the MBA I work at is in Secaucus, where all the dev people are. <laughs> Secaucus. Um, so there are three things that get me through these trials and tribulations of being a busy web developer, and that's books, cookies, and art, um, specifically Oreo. So if you also want to come up and talk to me and someone already asked what the pancake theorem was, you could also say, here, Jen, have some Oreos, and we'll get the conversation rolling. Um, but I also really love to read um, technical and non-technical books. Um, most of the stuff in Read Lately is technical and JavaScript related, and I also like to make art. And so. One of the things I like to do is combine art with code whenever I'm learning something new. And it all goes back to, um, are there CM members in here? Association of Computing Machinery? Anybody with a computer science background or who's studying computer science, you should be a member of the ACM. Um, Donald Knuth is one of the great living computer scientists. Um, in 1974, he won the Turing Award, and he wrote the volume, The Art of Programming. A really great read. Um, and for this award, he wrote this really awesome paper, Computer Programming as an Art. I carry a copy with me wherever I go. So if you see me, you can ask and take a read. Um, and in it, he talks about how Art sort of has a negative connotation in the sciences. We're all trying to push people into seeing what a science it is to do what we do, and forgetting that art is also a really good thing. And he says that science is knowledge which we can understand so well that we can teach it to a computer. And if we don't fully understand something, and usually we never fully understand anything, um, it is an art to deal with. And how many people here consider programming already to be an art? Very good, very good, because it really is. And really anything that you're doing has some sort of art form to it, unless you know it and you're a total expert in it. And most of us are not experts in really anything. Um, hate to burst your bubble. Um, 
So how can art be useful in learning how to program and get people interested in programming? I've, when I was working at Montclair State, I was teaching courses, but I was mostly advising undergraduate students who were already in computer science and IT, or they were sort of on the fence because they hate math and they don't want to do computer science, and I was sort of there to be like, you don't hate math, you hate math class, just suck it up. Um, and they always ask me for advice as to how to get into web development or how to do what I do, and I always say, there are three things. You should always be learning, you should always be creating, and you should always be nice. Unless someone's being mean to you, then you can be mean back. But if you have like a really good demeanor about yourself, you meet a lot of great people, you network, and that's how you get the jobs. Most of the stuff that I do now, I wouldn't have been able to do if I wasn't a big mouth and nice while doing it. So how do you get started with making art with code? Um, sometimes you just come up with an idea and make it. Um, I am really bad at waking up in the middle of the night because I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if I can make this. Um, and I never leave a notepad by my bed, although I should, because then I end up having to run across the room to the whiteboard and write something down so I don't forget it. How many people here get their greatest ideas while they're in the shower? Okay. Unfortunately, I get mine while I'm trying to fall asleep, and there's that moment right when you're about to fall asleep where it's like it hits me, so I don't really sleep too much. Um, so you can come up with an idea and make it. You can leverage the functionality of a language to just make something pretty. Um, you can improve upon an already existing work. Now, I'm not saying take something that somebody made and said, you know what, this sucks, I could do it better, because again, you have to be nice. Um, so if you take something that someone's done and says, hey, I can improve upon this, this is sort of the basis of open source programming, um, you can make art in that way as well. Um, and also you can reinvent the whole damn wheel. Um, my friend at the NBA, Nick, who I'll talk about later in the slides, um, he said that his friend says, I reinvent the wheel because my wheel is better. Um, and so if you see something that someone's already made and you're like, I can make it better or I wonder if I can make it, it's okay because it's not like you're stealing a proprietary idea um, or anything like that. Um, this is just a learning tool for us and to get people interested. So I'm gonna go over a couple examples of things that I've made using code and art. Um, I call everything that I make stupid and I hate it, but really deep down inside, I like love these little things. So um, getting out of Java and PHP, I wanted to di like dive into CSS a little bit. Um, and CSS3 allows you to do a lot of cool stuff with shapes. And so I decided I wanna make a xylophone um, with CSS. Um, the wooden bars there have a background image. And I want it to play noise, like I want it to play sounds when you click on it, kind of like a real um, xylophone. And so I made that, and it was really simple with jQuery. There's a um, sound plugin, um, and this is written years ago. Um, and so really when you like hover, or I also have a click action one, it plays a sound and changes the color. Um, I was dating a musician at the time, and I said, I want you to make me these MP3s for Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. And we did that. Um, and what I learned, um, I learned that um, this stuff looks really hilarious on Internet Explorer. Um, <laughs> really, really funny. I called it the, the stairway to heaven, and then somebody said, no, it's more like going down to hell, but you know. Uh, but when you're an artist, you can like Internet Explorer because it does pretty cool stuff that's unexpected. Um, and sometimes you really don't notice it. I still think that that's really pretty. I don't know. So um, another thing I learned besides how to do the CSS3 properties and how to use the sound plugin to play music, I also learned the restrictions of using sound um, on the client side when clicking on something. It was very slow. And my boyfriend, and I, boyfriend at the time and I were trying to compress the noises as much as possible so that there wasn't any delay and it was causing real problems. So I ended up rebuilding it um, sort of like server-side script and it sounded a little bit better. But you know, I'm an artist, just let me be. Whenever someone tells me it looks stupid in Internet Explorer, I just say shut up. Because um, if people have, uh, Firth said in his presentation, like just don't listen to the haters. Um, I'm a hater hater, so. Whatever. So one of my, in the middle of the night, oh, I had a great idea idea was um, I really love pixel art um, in 8-bit art. And so I was like, you know what? Because I was a PHP programmer, I always think PHP first. I'm like, I can make a PHP loop that spits out a whole bunch of div boxes. And then I can use jQuery so when you hover over 
those boxes, it changes the color that you picked, which is cool. And I made it, and some people have provided really great feedback. Um, but some of the feedback was, well, I want to be able to save my image. And you really can't do that when you just have div boxes that change color with CSS. So I had to learn how to use HTML5 Canvas to create the image, and I added this cool gold frame to it, um, and allowed users to make their pixel art and then save it onto their machine. And actually, uh, this is uh, make8bitart.com that I posted, and so you can sort of you know, pick what your controls are and draw, and then you can save it as a PNG file, and you've created art and you can save it. And I've been getting a lot of really cool feedback with this as well. Um, here's some user submitted art. I have about like a thousand Mario's on my server. <laughs> and actually, if any of you guys have a really good recommendation for a host, I got an email from my host today saying, you have too many files on your server. Um, so come and see me after the talk because I'm looking for somewhere where they can handle a thousand Mario's and more. Um, also got a bunch of the aliens, um, the Fonz. This is back when it was CSS only, and so they had to take screenshots of it, which is only like two years ago, but it feels like forever ago. Um, this is really special, because this is the first one I made, and I meant to make the first one like really fancy, and then I accidentally clicked a button because my cat jumped like on my arm, and I was trying not to like bleed all over my shirt, but this is what I made. So this is called Jeffrey after my cat. And Starry Night, which is really cool. Um, the same guy that did the fonts had done this one. And then I saw on Twitter that someone used it to create little heads of him and his family. And for Mother's Day, he printed them out and gave his mom. And I thought that that was really, really sweet. So just something stupid, again, I always call it stupid, that I made. People are actually using it. A lot of people are using it every day and creating art and sending me emails, giving me a lot of feedback. Also what they've made and saying how awesome they think it is. Because it's cheap and free and easy to use. This is my favorite feedback of all, though, and I saw it on Twitter yesterday, it was back in August, is that I'm a less fabulous Tinygram-like app. Um, I just thought that, would, like, why tweet that? I love that, though. <laughs> so I'll be putting that on the back of my book that I write about this whole experience. Um, so. This make art.com has become like a never-ending art project for me. Um, a lot of the feedback was, are you ever going to get rid of that stupid frame? And I'm like, no. But I am making a full page canvas sort of separate application, still web-based, where people could actually use it to make art and save it in their own sizes. Um, also experimenting with different pixel sizes. Also pixel shapes, which I'll get into. And also collaborating with artists. I have a lot of artist friends, which is why I got into this stuff, um, who are making their own frames for me to put onto um, make8bitart.com. Also, a really exciting thing that happened was I was um, called out by uh, this guy, Jason, who's the dean of the Trios College, the game development program in Toronto. And they have this huge Game On 2.0 video game exhibit that's going right now in the Ontario Science Center until September 2nd. And they have two stations of my 8-bit art application. So like, there's tons of kids and their families that are going, and they're making their own little 8-bit art characters with my stupid application. Um, and as you can tell, he got rid of the stupid frame for me. <laughs> and it's really sweet, because these are screen caps from the video of like people using it. And they can be laughing at how dumb it is, but really, in my own mind, they're having a good time. And that makes me feel really good. And I want to go there and like make them all my best friends. So I talked about exploring different uh, pixel shapes. Um, I started getting into hexels or hexagon pixels. Um, my pal Dane Fagerholm, he lives out in Seattle. He's a GIF artist. And he always sends me computer science um, white papers that he wants me to sort of decipher for him, because um, somebody had written something about the work that he does, and they had it all wrong. And so he sent me this paper about how hexagon-sized pixels might actually show higher quality in photographs. And so I sort of explored that. And I said, you know what? Why don't I change my 8-bit art application to also allow hexagon pixels, which is quite a feat. Um, it's really easy to make a shape um, and have it draw on a canvas with JavaScript. 
Um, but it's not so easy when it's an odd shape. So this is sort of a beginning work in progress where I have the hexels being drawn. Um, and then I have the grid. Now you see it kind of looks wonky because hexagons, they sort of shift above or below depending on what row that it's in. And so it takes a lot of math. And as I mentioned before, I'm a big math nerd. So I've been having a lot of fun with getting this to work. And I've been collaborating with my friend Nick at the MBA. Um, his name's Nick Hortensio. I wish he was here. Um, but, and JS stands for Gen Schiffer, not JavaScript. Um, all of your .js files stand for Gen Schiffer, not JavaScript. Uh, so Nick and I, we work at the MBA. He's a senior, front, uh, senior software engineer. And we've known each other for about 10 years now. And we met um, at like a college party or something like that. And we're both developers. And we've been great friends since. And we collaborate a lot under the name CSS Perverts, which is kind of us making fun of the term rock star developer. So if you see that phrase, that's Nick and I. <laughs> so we like, instead of finishing each other's sentences, we finish each other's artwork. And he's a really, really great artist. He draws hands, which are really hard to draw incredibly. Um, and so I was working on the Hexels thing, and he sort of finished the math for it. And right now I'm building um, another art project. I'm building a computer out of a light bright from 1974 and rewiring it with a Raspberry Pi. And so he updated the Hexel app to make it a light bright style app. And it was like really quick because the grid is still the same for hexagon pixels, except you just have a circle in the center. So that's all you really have to draw. And so being able to collaborate with different people, I feel like is much easier when you're working with something universal like art. Um, if you work just with healthcare, um, you have to find other people that are interested in healthcare um, to collaborate. And also, healthcare, to me, is not nearly as fun as something like light bright grids and hexels and all that. Now, working with jQuery and photography has been a lot of fun. Um, we were dealing with this uh, grid that had images in it, and we didn't want that column to be sorted, because why would you want to sort images, and how can you sort them? And then Nick and I were like, well, we can sort them by color. And you can access every pixel in an image and so I decided to try to do that. And this is Nick zoomed in. Um, so of course, I usually start out in PHP because things are usually faster on the server side for this sort of stuff. So I took an image and, uh, of him, and I went through each pixel in PHP. It's probably really hard um, to see. Um, but it was only a few lines of code. I went through each pixel, and then I just outputted a div box of the same color that that pixel was. And then that's sort of how um, I instantly created this pixel portrait of Nick with just a little bit of code. Um, and then I thought, well, I know how to do it in PHP. I wonder if I can do this with JavaScript. And so as a learning process, I decided to take a picture of myself and try to do the same thing with JavaScript. Um, it took a little more code. Um, let me. OK, so here's, here is the, the image after it's been processed and spit out as div boxes. Um, and then here's the tiny image up on the right. And then for me, um, I have a little tiny image. And this is done in uh, jQuery. And it's kind of slow, which is why the image is so tiny. Because when it's on the client side, it has to go through every single pixel. And of course, the larger the image, the more pixels you have. Um, and what it does is it just creates these div boxes. And so you can kind of see what color um, comes up. And I added some spacing. And what's cool with processing the pixels of an image is that this would kind of make a pretty cool jQuery plugin where it converts images into these div boxes. And you can you know, make every you know, even row, you know, desaturated, or anything like that. Um, the code is a little bit um, bigger, because the first thing you have to do is put the image onto a canvas. Um, and I was like, oh, well, I know a little bit about canvases because of this 8-bit art application I did. And so that's what I did. And then you go through every pixel, um, and then you output that. And all of my stuff, and you'll see in the front of my slides, I have this directory in my site, slash stuff. And that's where all my stuff is. And if you go there, you can see a list of all the stuff I'm working on. And half of it is broken. Half of it's in progress. Because um, again, I'm forever in a flux of overwhelmingness and moving on to new things. Um, but that's just something that I had a lot of fun working with. 
So just like when I was working with the CSS and learning the restrictions for that 8-bit app being that you can't save images, um, or with the xylophone where I learned the restrictions that sound, it, it just there's a, a lot of lag. Um, I learned with this that there's a speed restriction when you're working clients out with JavaScript versus the PHP. So in that situation, I think, OK, well, maybe it's better off if I do it server side. Um, but you don't always have that choice. Also, you have to think about your client and server side uh, infrastructure. Um, if you think that there aren't servers out there that don't have PHP installed, then you've never worked in healthcare or finance. Um, so these are things that you sort of have to think about. And I've learned by doing art. And if you are restricted, then it's time to explore other languages, just like I did with PHP going to JavaScript. Um, or you can cry. And crying's OK, because I'm an artist. I can cry. It's what I do. <laughs> So I mentioned my friend Dane. Um, he makes these really awesome depth state um, image maps in Photoshop and makes these sort of like animated GIFs that have this really cool 3D effect. Um, and he's made stuff for a whole bunch of different companies, including MTV. Um, and he's just a really, really incredible artist. Um, Dane is an artist, and he's learning to code. He wants to make an iOS game out of um, these blue monster characters and crystals. And so he's learning how to code you know, as we speak um, so he can make his own game. So you have artists that are creating stuff on the web and becoming popular. And they're like, well, how can I leverage this? How can I move further? And they're like, well, I'm going to learn how to code. The issue is, is that he's very overwhelmed. And you know, he's asked me, how do you do iOS development, which I don't know how to do. Um, so it's a hard thing to start. But um, He's sort of chunking away at it. And when you're motivated, and artists usually are very motivated, um, they make some cool things. Uh, this is a basketball game. Um, the vectors are drawn Raphael.js. Uh, and my friend Nick that I work with, the other CSS pervert, uh, he started making this. And I'll probably be finishing it. Um, and making games is really great, um, because it's really easy to collaborate with people on it. Um, we both have GitHub accounts, and we just sort of work everything and just make a mess out of everything, um, which is fine because it's art. Um, and uh, making games, games is also another universal thing. You know what I mean? People of all ages are into games. And I don't want to start like a conversation, well, I don't want to start like an argument about whether video games are considered art because I think that everything is art. Um, but when I had students come up to me saying, I'm not sure if I want to study computer science or IT because they're both very different things. Um, I say, well, what do you want to do? Usually they say, I want to do game development or they want to do web development. So both things students have a lot of interest in. Um, web development involves a lot less math and physics, which is why they usually end up in that direction. I made a stupid game um, out of jQuery. Um, this is like my first. I think I made this before the xylophone. And I had these like three images of like a wolf and then a bunch of candy. And then like it randomizes in the JavaScript where the wolf is. And if you click the wolf, then you lose. And that's it. And it just refreshes the page and you start again. And I sort of made this as a device to procrastinate from doing the dishes. Um, so I made it in like 20 minutes. And I was like, babe, I'm, d I'm doing something. I'm busy. Like, Aaron. So art is really good at like, helping you procrastinate and like, not have to do chores. Because I love art and I hate chores. Um, I used to uh, use Tumblr a lot for writing about technology. And I really got into making things out of CSS, which is sort of like a touchy topic with people. Um, <laughs> like, move on, guys. Um, so I made these like road signs. And they actually, the text is not CSS. It's the Road Geek font, which is used in street signs. Um, and then I made these breakfast foods. And I said, like, oh, look what like, I made with CSS, blah, 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 just because I was bored. I'm always bored. I'm like, I'm going to do, I want to do code. I don't want to like, watch like, reality shows. No hating on reality shows, but they melt my brain. Um, and so I made them. And this one guy like, was like, oh, yeah, this is really cool. But just because you can doesn't mean you should, which I feel like is like a fortune cookie that I get every single day whenever I show somebody something that I think is really cool. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Well, I say shut up. Tell that to ASCII artists. You know what I mean? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. ASCII art is awesome. Um, there's a geocities.com site I found today. <laughs> 
But don't remove any of the new uh, .html because then it goes to Yahoo's like GeoCities is down, but it's out there. Um, and also frame set artists. This is really hilarious to me. Um, there are artists who, um, there was an exhibition, I forget where, and they made frame set art. And we all hate frame sets. I mean, I'm, how many people here have never even heard of a frame set? Bless your soul. Um, so these artists are actually creating really cool art with frame sets. Um, here's one real cool one, uh, which, you know, it's, what does it say? Welcome to the cabinet of dreams, which is what I call my cat's litter box. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Like, just because you can, just do it, you know? Because whatever, I'm an artist, just let me be me. So what does art have to do with all this learning how to program um, and getting people interested? You know, you're testing the limits of the language or library that you're using. Um, if you want to learn a language and you're like, I'm not sure what I want to do, um, you don't want to, I mean, most people say like, oh, print out hello world. That's like the first thing you want to do. And then you print out hello world and then you go on LinkedIn and you say, I'm a Python expert because I print out hello world. Um, <laughs> but you really don't know much besides the print statement, you know? Um, so the first thing you want to do is come up with a project and art's pretty easy to come up with. You could say, I want to make a xylophone out of CSS or I want to know, like, you could say, like, oh, I want to learn Java. I wonder if I can, you know, make a xylophone out of Java. And then you sort of go online and learn how to do it. And it'll be frustrating, but when it's done, that's the reason why we all are here and what, why we do what we do. Um, I actually had one uh, high school kid who emailed me last week, and he goes, oh, I really love your xylophone. And I'm like, wow, I like, forgot I made that. And he goes, yeah. I thought, like, oh, I'm going to make a xylophone out of CSS. And so I Google searched it to see if somebody else did, and you came up. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> you did not. And I said, go ahead, make it better, because mine sucks. And you know, I want to see how you were doing things. And so him and I have been emailing each other back and forth, and he's been asking me how to do CSS, um, how to programming, as I call it. Um, and now I have this like high school kid that I'm mentoring and programming. And really, before he wasn't into code that much, but he's really into music. And so now I've got like I've I've caught another one into our trap. <laughs> um, you exercise both sides of your brain. Um, which is important. Um, we always seem to fall into this one track at like whether it's our jobs as often as it is. Um, like at the NBA for uh, finals, which are going on uh, right now, um, I had to make a jQuery scroller and like worked so hard on it that like when I got home, the last thing I wanted to do was code in jQuery or at least code a scroller. Um, but I didn't want to watch reality television, so it's like I'm going to come up with something that I can re create. And so I've been working on my Pixel app. You're making something that's universally appreciated. Um, so that high school kid who's only into music wouldn't really be into how I'm processing the pixels in an image of me looking like a total nerd. Um, but he's interested in the xylophone, and that's kind of cool. Um, same thing with little kids. Little kids don't care that I made an application that crowdsources healthcare costs. They don't care about that. Um, but that xylophone is actually kind of fun to play with on a touchscreen device. It gets folks and kids inspired and interested in coding, which is something that we really need to do. Um, and working in a computer science department at a state university, I know that there are so many jobs out there in technology, and we are not training enough people to fill those jobs. Um, and it's not enough anymore to just say, oh, there's tons of jobs, and there's tons of money in computer science. Um, because when they get to the point where, like, wow, this is really hard work, they seem to like taper off into other things. And we got to keep them motivated um, and show them the fruits of their labor. And it is a lot of labor. Development's really hard. Um, and because you feel like it. Because, you know, whatever. You know, you're an artist. Just let you be you. So when you go back to wherever you go, and I go back to New Jersey, um, you should definitely check out Donald Knuth's Art of Programming. Um, I have this really great book, um, Close to the Machine, by Ellen Ullman. Um, she's a software engineer, now a novelist. And she wrote a great book about what it was like being a software engineer in the 90s. Um, it's not a book about being a female software engineer, um, because I don't believe in that phrase. It's a book about being a software engineer and 
being sort of hindered by the fact that, you know, you're getting old and you see all these younger people that are behind you that are learning development, how to not be afraid of that and how to always stay motivated because it's really important in our jobs to always keep learning, always be creating, and always be nice. Um, if you happen to go to Toronto, head to the Game On 2.0 exhibit. Um, you can check out my friend Dane's stuff and uh, you can go to cssperverts.com. We have like a fake CSS tutorial there, don't believe it, um, but we'll be posting all the stuff that we've been collaborating on. Um, and that's my cat, Jeffrey, and thank you very much. Do I have any questions or ideas um, or ways to start a conversation with people to get interested in programming with Art Involved? Let me know. I think we have some time. Oh, thank you. Can't see. You know, I was, I always wanted, okay, when I grew up, I wanted to be a dinosaur, and then I wanted to be an astronaut, and then now I just want to be a dinosaur. Um, I took physics in college, and it was the hardest class, and it was just a really bad experience, and I sort of fell out of it, which is the issue with keeping kids interested in computer science, because usually when they hit those intro to programming courses, which can be terribly done, um, that could really ruin it for most people, and I feel like that's where we need to focus now, is how people are introduced at the college level or even the high school level to programming. Um, same with math. Um, I, I don't play too many games. Visually, I like them. I like to watch. How many people were at that, uh, that barcade place last night? I feel like a bunch of us ended up there, ground control. That place is really cool, and I just like to watch games. I played some games, I got my ass whooped, um, which is always fun, but yeah. I mean, there's so many different fields to get into. I mean, I was working mostly in hyper-local news, which sounds really boring um, from a development standpoint, because it kind of is, but you get to meet a lot of like, exciting like, journalists and stuff, and it's very fast-paced, and that's sort of like what I'm into. But. Yeah, who knows why I do the things that I do. <laughs> Any other questions? I see hands. You're going to have to keep shouting. I'm, I'm like blind in my left eye. Yes, I see a hand. Yes, definitely. Actually, it's really funny. I read a blog post the other day, like a couple of days ago, about people putting ASCII art signatures into their source code. And like, I want to do that at the MBA, but it's probably not allowed. <laughs> like a basketball or a dinosaur, that's usually what I put in. Um, but yeah, you know, source code in itself is art. And the cool thing is that source code can also be interpreted in different ways, depending on what language, you know what I mean, you're looking at. And then you can see it and think, oh, I can do this in a different way and sort of move on to it. I think that open source programming is a fantastic art, and it's a great community to be part of. And they're some of the most creative people I've ever met in my entire life. What, he, what he's asking is, he, if there was a way to sort of visually show what's actually happening, sort of like in the back lines of code, you know, an array being created and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a, a real issue because when you're introducing, like, even just adults to object-oriented programming, because in my school that's what we introduce um, with Java, they don't really get the concept of, like, you think that they, you would immediately pick up on the concept of an object and how they have states and behaviors, but usually it's the first time they're hearing the idea of an object having a state and a behavior, and you're going so quickly that they just are like, oh, this isn't important, and then when they're told to create a loop, they're like, wait, what? Like, what's going on? Um, it would be good if people sort of were able to rewrite the way that intro to programming is taught. Um, if you go on YouTube, actually, one of my favorite things to do is watch visualizations of search algorithms. And if you go on YouTube and search algorithmic like sort visualization, there's a lot of really cool stuff that shows you like how you know how weird bubble sort looks as you're searching through things. Those are good things to introduce to people and say, hey, this is computer science. Look how cool it is. So you guys should go out and make something like that, because I'm busy. <laughs>
The finals aren't even over yet. The Yankees played like a 19 inning game the other day. Like I'm beat. I see hands, I think. No? OK. Well, thank you so much for making this conference my first jQuery conference and my first conference talk such a great experience. Um, and I hope to see you all later. I love you. Bye.